Holy crap, you may think. The Tandy computer turned red in color. What happened? And uh, yeah, you're almost right. Except this is not a Tandy. This computer is called the Alice. And it was a cooperation between Metra Eachette in France and uh, Tandy in the US. It even runs a color version of Microsoft Basic from 1982. There were three versions of the Alice. The one that I have here, which is uh, basically identical to the Tandy computer. And uh, later on, they came out with another one that was uh, practically identical. Uh, I have one here. Uh, yeah, And this is a 16K version. Later on, they came out with a 64K version with a real keyboard. This one, the Alice 90. And uh, we'll take a look at all three today. But first, I'll just do the little Hello World program, as usual. And uh, let's just run it here f and see. Whoa, it works. So cool. So if we take a look at the computer, the first thing that we notice is that it's not very big. The, the next thing is that it has a real mechanical keyboard. And it feels pretty good. I know it looks like the Auric 1 keyboard, but this one here is actually uh, quite nice and not as soggy. So uh, if the buttons had been a little bit bigger, uh, I guess you could use it for proper typing. Uh, if we turn it around on this side, there's nothing. Uh, on the back, there is uh, from left to right, there's a power supply input. And um, back in 1983, the French had uh, what they called Peritel, which is scarred to us, and uh, none of this TV modulator output junk. No dot crawl, nothing. A really nice and clean display coming out of this computer. Then behind this plastic cover here, we have uh, an edge connector, and all the signals from the CPU are, are, are there. Then we have a reset button, then we have a serial port and a cassette port. Uh, and if we just uh, turn it to the other side here, we have an on-off switch. So this machine had a nice set of features, uh, really good hardware support. Feature-wise, it had Microsoft Basic, it had 8K of ROM and 4K of RAM, and it was able to generate color and sound. So it was quite a good little computer. It came shipped in two different ways. The first way was in a standard cardboard box, which had been uh, decorated by a famous French cartoonist. And uh, I think Maitre Yachette, they were very uh, proud of that. And you can see his signature uh, down here in the corner. Monsieur Mubius. And uh, yeah. Another way to buy this machine was as a kit. And it came complete in a, a suitcase like this. And uh, if we open it up, we will see... Uh, the missing hole for my uh, Alice and you will see the power supply down here on the right there's a SCART cable and a cassette cable as well and uh, the warranty also came with a cassette player for storage and playback and uh, some games and some uh, educational software and down here there's a 16K RAM expansion, which reminds me of Sinclair quite badly. Uh, this kit is a uh, serial number 6572, so it's one of the earlier versions. Up here in the, in the lid we have the basic instruction manual, the user guide, and uh, there is even how to write assembly. So that is really cool and high-end. On the right there is uh, some kind of a game, uh, a, math, um, a math tutor in French. So yeah, pretty cool. And just to finish off everything, you could of course also buy a printer for this machine. And uh, the printer is a little thermal thing 
and uh, this thing weighs a ton so yeah that was the Alice and uh, later they came out with this thing which is a 32k RAM version so no more wobbly memory expansion device at the back of the computer uh, but as far as I know they also changed the video controller chip uh, in this 32k version so not all the software would be compatible if we look at this one here color TV, Peritel or SCART interface and now 32k memory 16k RAM 16k ROM with Microsoft Basic that is a massive uh, ROM for 1983 and uh, then they have an assembler editor 9 colors and different uh, text 25 by 80 again this is massive for 1983 and sound and uh, printer and cassette player so yeah this is an awesome little uh, machine considering everything and uh, I think I showed you earlier uh, but uh, and physically it looks exactly the same as the normal Alice and the final Alice it looks like this it has a real keyboard and uh, if we just take a quick look at the back it has the same uh, arrangement as earlier the power switch, the power connector, a SCART connector a reset switch and serial port and uh, a tape input output I guess it's a little bit like Sinclair with the plus two and the plus three and whatever they were going for the upgrade market with this one and uh, of course it's also red color and has a really funky mechanical design so uh, unfortunately I think this one is not working so I'll have to do a repair video on this one uh, later on but now let's do a tear down of all three and uh, take a quick look inside and oh dear down here we have a warranty sticker opening this machine voids the warranty oh pop too bad and uh, let's just open it up now and see what the house Oh, 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 gold! Look at that! There is nothing to see. Well, first of all, uh, there's a huge metal screen on top of everything, so that is quite limited what we can uh, what we can see. There must be a CPU under here, the because what we can see here is the video generator, the 6848 and a massive amount of uh, transistors for the SCART output there we have a Texas chip this should be a TMS 37 this is a ROM we have a lot of logic around here and an op amp for the cassette player so yeah but uh, at least we can see the quality of this build which is really really nice and uh, on top here we have the keyboard uh, which is uh, in a separate unit the cables uh, are really good quality as well and the connectors they open up like this uh, for removing the cables here it's definitely one or two steps up from the Sinclair ZX Spectrum my only problem here is that the connector here is not gold plated but yeah, nice, nice, nice build, really awesome little machine. And uh, let's just put that back again because uh, because uh, I'm not going to remove that uh, metal screen. They were using Torx screws, which were practically impossible to get for a normal people. Uh, well, I guess they were worried people would open it up and void the warranty uh, okay let's take a look inside uh, whoops and there we have it I must admit I'm not quite sure what the retail price was for this computer but the quality is so much better than the Sinclair 
and and by quality I mean uh, the build quality. The PCB is a really good quality. The ICs are soldered directly in. The cables here are real cables. Okay, so we take a look inside the Alice 2. Uh, we have of course the 6803 CPU, which is running at 1 MHz. Next to that we have the video generator chip, which is an EF9345. And uh, this is a more powerful version of the 6805. And that's why it's able to generate uh, 80 characters across, which is uh, quite unique for 1983. Then we have what looks like a character generator ROM here and uh, some RAM chips. And uh, all the way to the left we have the power supply and the voltage regulator here has a massive heatsink. So that is really nice. Um, down here we have three transistors. These are the drivers for the SCART. We have a red, green and blue. And the SCART connector down here of course. Next to that we have another chip and I think this is an ASIC or ULA or something like that. The name is uh, impossible to identify. Uh, but if we continue to the right we have a ROM here and this should be the 16K. And finally we have a serial port chip and uh, some other I.O. And uh, the main memory over here. In this corner we have a serial port output uh, through a RS232 driver and uh, we have a little R amp here, a 741 which is used for the audio for the cassette player uh, that connects through here. So uh, let's close this and uh, take a look at the Alice 90. Seems to be a couple of screws missing on this one. Must have been opened before. And uh, yeah, we now have that shitty ribbon cable uh, from the Sinclair days. And if we look at the layout and the chipset, it's very, very similar to the Alice 2. The power supply and the, the switch and the, the voltage regulator. And uh, what do we have here? We have. And then we have the main CPU, the graphics chip, uh, the character ROM, I guess, some graphics RAM, an analog switch, a clock generator, and uh, we have all the transistors to drive the SCART down here. Video of course coming out of the video chip goes through all these resistors and uh, goes out through the SCART. Then we have the main ROM and uh, we have a couple of ASICs here. And uh, we have now, very important, we have a lot more memory. We have four memory chips here compared to just uh, two in the other machine. And again we have a serial port line driver and uh, we have an ARB amp for the cassette uh, deck. It's basically identical to the Alice 2 except for uh, yeah the more RAM and the mechanical keyboard here. And uh, of course that is, uh, that is cool. But uh, I guess it wasn't enough. So let's just look at the date code on the chips. Uh, 84, week 22, week 39, week 39. And yeah, the logo on these chips are all Thompson. Ex except from the memory, which is uh, from NEC or Texas Instruments. Uh, but that's it. I guess uh, they decided that they wanted to make their own chipset for this. But anyway, that's it for the Matra Alice uh, series of computers. And um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see you again later.